Hello everyone, welcome to Achievers Academy. Friends, today I am going to discuss with you the syllabus of science and technology. We will learn what exactly the syllabus of science and technology is for the TSPSC group 1 examination. TSPSC group 1 examination. This course will be exclusively developed for the TSPSC group 1 examination. Okay, each and every term, each and every term which is given in your syllabus will be explained in detail and uh, following notes will also be provided in this course of science and technology. Each and every term. When I say each and every term, each and every word has its definition in the following classes after this syllabus. Okay, so first let's see which part of the paper, which part of the paper uh, does this science and technology belongs to. But when it comes to the TSPSC group 1 mains, science and technology belongs to the paper 5. Paper 5, which calls science and technology data interpretation. Science and technology and uh, data interpretation. This whole paper, this whole paper 5 carries 150 marks. How many marks, my friend? 150 marks. Of these 150 marks, 100 marks, 100 marks belongs to the science and technology topic and next 50 marks belong to data interpretation. Okay. So now some might say, Sir, TSPSC group 1 mains examination, the weightage for science and technology is only 100 marks. No, it's wrong. No, it's wrong. Why? Because you have a paper called essay paper. That is the first paper of your exam. Essay paper. This essay paper contains almost six topics. Six topics. Of these six topics, which are divided into two in each section. Three sections, two in each section. Okay. The section two of your paper, essay paper, contains one of the topic as s and science and technology. So, each essay carries 50 marks. So the total weightage for the science and technology in the TSPSC group 1 mains will be 150 marks when compared with added with essay and the paper of 100 marks. Okay. So now in order to gain this 150 marks of your whole examination, what should you do? You should just know what's in the syllabus analyze the syllabus understand each and every term follow the notes what we provide here at achievers academy and follow the current efforts what we provide here at the current at the achievers academy and our course material has been developed in such a way that each and every part of the syllabus is in detail nothing you will be missing nothing in the sense nothing so now when you see this syllabus part it has almost like 10 units when you have 100 marks 100 marks you have to study 10 units in your examination okay the syllabus starts with the two sections the syllabus has two sections first section is role and impact of science and technology next section will be modern science and technology okay each section has five units each section has five units now when you see the first chapter of science and technology first chapter is the role and impact is the section okay classical and emerging areas of science and technology is your head topic okay so i'm not going to teach you anything about this now because though this first unit is provided at the start of your syllabus this should be read last this should be read last in the last you have to study this never see this now because whatever you learn in the nine chapters you will apply in your first chapter you will apply in your first chapter so first chapter we will look in the last okay now i'm gonna skip this now first chapter is basically classical and emerging technologies in science and technology or emerges area emerging areas in science and technology now when you see the second chapter, the heading here shows, second chapter is National Policy of Science and Technology. National Policy of Science and Technology. It follows with the subtopics of changes in the policy from time to time, technology missions, information communication technology, basics in computers, robotics, nanotechnology and communication. Computers, robotics nanotechnology and communication and whole figures follows what you're going to learn in this chapter what you're going to learn in this chapter first thing india has a science and technology policy science and technology policy 
starting from 1953 1953 we have one okay we had one in 1983 we had one in 2003 we have one in 2013 and now we have draft science technology innovation policy or stip 2021 so these many policies we have what were the objectives of each of these policies how they evolved what are the achievements what are the achievements due to this policy that will be studied here okay in an evolutionary manner in an evolutionary manner because my friends uh, in this chapter you learn science and technology policy simply but how science and technology policy evolved into a science technology innovation the word innovation was added in the later times we'll also learn about innovation here in the second part you have word called technology missions in this we will learn about something called pms okay pm science and technology stiac okay s t i a c okay scientific advisor of uh, pm under this pm stiac we have almost like nine missions nine technology missions starting from artificial intelligence language translation what is that language translation translation something called agni agni okay all these nine missions will be studying in this technology missions apart from these nine missions you will also be learning about some other missions like cyber integrated cyber physical uh, systems integrated cyber physical system national mission on national mission on electronic mobility national mission on electronic mobility or electric mobility okay next you will also learn about national mission on nanotechnology you will also learn about national mission on nanotechnology so these are the various types of uh, technology missions okay you have seen national mission on quantum computing isn't it those missions will be learned here next is basics of computer friends here in the syllabus of science and technology we are not going to learn what is input device what is output device not all that we focus here on the modern computer technologies like like for example we will learn about quantum computing what is quantum computing we will also learn about artificial intelligence we will also learn about big data big data we will also learn about cryptography cryptography we will also learn about supercomputers what is that super computers and what are their applications in the part of computer so this is what you will be learning in the computers for the science and technology not the basics okay we have a separate computer course that is very different okay for this you will be restricted for the applications of computer okay next you will be learning about the robotics okay what are the applications of various patterns of robotics for example deep sea exploration deep sea exploration okay you will also learn about military robots military robots okay you will learn about the military robots you will learn deep sea exploration how space can use robotics for example you will also learn current affairs everything is based on current affairs my friends we here have been able to link the current affairs with the static syllabus okay so please try to follow us very regularly so that you are very keen and clear at your concepts in science and technology okay now you will learn about the military robots and in the space the indian isro has developed uh, isro has developed vyoma mitra vyoma mitra mitra a andro humanoid robo a humanoid robo who has only a torso isn't it so all these things we will discuss in the robotics where in the nanotechnology you will learn about the various fields of nanotechnology applications of nanotechnology you will also learn about nano substances like fulgurants fulgurants or some might call c60 buck minister okay you might also be learning you will also be learning about graphene graphene nanotubes nano carbon tubes okay all these you will be learning okay and their applications you will also learn about the negative effects of nanotechnology in this part of your syllabus okay 
so in the time of covid you might have seen graphene mask have been developed which protect us from the bacteria especially see graphene is a nano material graphene graphene is an allotropy of carbon basically allotropy of carbon basically what is the specialty of graphene graphene has antibacterial properties antibacterial properties because of that we will also learn about that in communication we will learn about the latest technologies what is in the communication you learn what is 5g what is 4g what is the difference between them you will learn about wi-fi what are the different wi-fi technologies you have you will learn about bluetooth bluetooth okay that is communication networking okay you will also learn about something called li-fi okay light fidelity that is producing or sending data through the light as a medium isn't it so all this you will be learning in the chapter of communication apart from that in communication you will also be learning about cloud cloud and edge computing edge computing okay either in the computers or either in the communication i will be making you learn about the cloud computing and edge computing edge computing is a latest term which is storing data at the point of source at the point of source rather than storing it at a cloud which is remotely present okay so all this don't worry don't worry if you're not understanding my words you will be understanding them each and every one very clearly when you are keen with our course okay when you complete our course i can say you will be understanding each and everything i'm just trying to make you curious about the course okay next you have two space topics in the syllabus one is space programs in india space programs in india here we have to explore a lot of dimensions here lot of dimensions when you are learning space programs in india for the purpose of preliminary in mains there is nowhere mentioned you see only limited syllabus but for the purpose of preliminary and also as the term called space programs in india has a very wider connotation i will be teaching you i will be teaching you about the different orbits like kepler law i will teaching you kepler law kepler law and types of orbits types of orbits soon after the types of orbits i will teach you different satellite launch vehicles launch vehicles of india vehicles of india present and next generation ramjet scramjet pslv gslv okay satellite launch vehicle augmented satellite launch vehicle all i will be teaching you and i will make you to interlink orbits with the launch vehicle orbits with the launch vehicle okay from here we will go into the satellites various types of satellite system of india and all those when you see i said you the space program in india is a wider connotation so then i have to even teach you i have to even teach you regarding the commercialization of space okay commercialization because space program in india commercialization of space is also a part of space program for example in commercialization i will be teaching you about a institute called anthrix anthrix i will also make you to learn about new space india limited i will also make you to learn about india space in space okay and i will also make you to learn the difference between these three institutions anthrix new space india limited and india space so this wider connotation space program in india will be done in such a way and some points i will be teaching you about the history of isro history of isro and ethical or guidance what moves isro will also be learned here okay so when apart from this what are all other topics in the syllabus okay in the same third chapter space programs in india okay here you have ended its applications with reference to special reference to industry for example isro has developed isro has developed super capacitors super capacitors okay these super capacitors can be used for fast charging fast charging charging and they can also be used for energy storage energy storage isro also has developed technologies like fire resistant technologies fire resistant 
So how these technologies developed by ISRO can be utilized in industry, those applications I will be telling you with the real life examples. Okay, and how ISRO helps and its satellite system helps agriculture. How ISRO's satellite system helps in the rural development activities? What are the various satellite communication and resource mapping systems of ISRO? Like INSAT series which is a communication satellite. EDUSAT series that is for the purpose of education which was later decommissioned and the load was sent to the INSAT series. Okay, and what is Chandrayaan 1 mission? What are the present missions which are done by the ISRO? What are the future missions? Like for example, I will also be teaching you here. Chandrayaan 2. You will also learn about Mars orbital mission which are extra topics which are necessary to learn. Future missions like Gaganyan. Gaganyan. I will also be telling you about Chandrayaan 3. Chandrayaan Three. I'll also be teaching you about NASA ISRO synthetic arpeggiator radar. Nisar, Nisar mission, Shukrayan mission, Shukrayan mission, ExpoSat, ExpoSat mission, and you'll also learn about Aditya L1. Aditya L1 mission in the present and future missions of ISRO. Okay, all the latest technologies, their parts, their needs, and what are their applications, you will be learning in this class. Okay, so hope you understood the part 3. Okay, the third chapter. Next is applications of space technology. You are very lucky. Why? Here you see applications with reference to industry and agriculture. This has been repeated in your syllabus. See agriculture and industry so no need to do this here so just complete the education i will be teaching you how edusat satellite system has been helping in the education field how iits have been connected to rural areas okay how various ict tools of isro have been utilized for education like satellite television and internet based education systems i will also make you understand how the technology space technology especially will help in tackling the climate change simply i have said you for example if you see satellites okay satellites or some space vehicles uh, basically use fuel cells what they use fuel cells basically alkaline fuel cells alkaline fuel cells so these alkaline fuel cells the output of these alkaline fuel cells will be water h2o which can be utilized for the production of water in the rural areas and i have also said you isro has developed major adhesives and paints adhesives and paints these paints these alkaline fuel cells can be utilized to reduce the climate change isn't it yes and i will also teach you how the satellite imaging and data can reduce or mitigate the disasters like cyclone flood tsunami natural and man-made disaster because if you gather the data that will be very helpful to know which places will be inundated by water during the time of flood or cyclone or which places will be inundated during the time of tsunami when does they occur how frequent they occur how to do the mitigation preparedness response and mitigation three phases three phases of disaster management will be discussed here in detail okay so next fifth chapter will be energy resources tricky large but easy tricky large chapter but easy chapter see hopefully this figure itself says you will learn about both renewable non-renewable sources of energy basically the term here you see what is the energy demand of india indian energy scenario hyphen hydel thermal and nuclear this is the first part of your syllabus that is uh, i'll be making you to learn what is the exact demand what is the per capita consumption of energy per capita energy consumption okay i will also tell you sector wise sector division of energy that is how much percentage of energy goes to the manufacturing what percentage goes to the in uh, various other industries like agriculture household and all that even those i will be explaining you 
okay within the topic of indian energy scenario you will be learning what is the share of each type of energy that is how much share does renewables have how much share does hydel nuclear and all those does have along with that as we are learning the science and technology i will be making you to understand the technology behind hydel energy technology behind thermal energy you will also learn about the nuclear energy and the three stages of nuclear energy three stages of uh, india's nuclear program india's nuclear self sufficiency program which is given by homi baba okay how thorium will be utilized i will also make you learn about the fast breeder reactor fast breeder reactor in the nuclear energy all the technology included along with that we have two types of nuclear technology isn't it nuclear fusion and nuclear fission basically nuclear fission fission is used in the nuclear reactors but today we were able to do fusion 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 in a thermal energy reactor iter experiment okay international thermal energy reactor iter experiment in which india is also a stakeholder even that i will be discussing with you in the nuclear technology apart from this apart from this you have to study about the renewables okay within the energy scenario i will tell you what is the share of renewables but here i will teach you each and one renewable like solar how the photovoltaic cells work what is the best state or the top state in producing solar energy all the statistics which state produces large amount of solar energy as of now karnataka and rajasthan will be fighting but karnataka is leading within the rooftop technology that is rooftop solar energy karnataka is the leader and i'll make you to learn wind energy what is the potential of wind energy in india which state has highest potential my friends gujarat has highest potential even such statistics i will tell you next is small mini and micro hydel what is the range of small what is the range of mini what is the range of a micro hydel these ranges i will be telling you here and various diagrams also will be provided biomass and waste based energy technologies like incineration 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 pyrolysis pyrolysis will be discussed here apart from these technologies you will also learn a modern technology called polycrack technology polycrack technology in this biomass energy waste next within geothermal i will tell you where are the major sources of geothermal in india and outside the country okay for example manikarnika in himachal pradesh okay manikaran or manikarnika in himachal pradesh that area ladakh area which are best sources of geothermal energy in india those i will discuss next will be tidal and fuel cells especially fuel cells extensively i will be discussing what are the different types of fuel cells what is the catalyst used what is the output what exactly is a fuel cell difference with battery next i'll learn make you to learn about the tidal energy here i'll go beyond and i will teach you about the ocean energy systems tidal wave etc so that you are able to attempt the preliminary question also even here i'll make you understand the statistics what are the projects india has taken up why projects in india have been stalled in case of tidal which country is the leader in tidal energy for example tidal energy the leader country is basically you might think denmark the other will be south korea okay south korea is basically the top most now energy security role of science and technology see this term what how can you have energy security by using science and technology is that what exactly is asking how can you have energy technology or energy security by utilizing science and technology here i'll make you to learn various dimensions in this for example science and technology for the energy security one is energy storage energy storage devices in this you will be learning about thermal battery thermal batteries okay you will be learn about the mechanical storage mechanical storage devices also okay apart from this apart from this okay energy storage is done i'll erase this 
even after energy storage what is the other dimension for energy security in science and technology that will be energy efficiency energy efficiency how you can achieve energy efficiency in india what are the various roles you have okay next is energy conversion energy conversion all this will be dealt in this chapter in this topic also next is biofuel cultivation and extraction he is saying simply how do you cultivate biofuel and how do you extract it simple so i will tell you what are the various crops used in biofuel cultivation next in extraction i will make you to learn various dimensions in extraction for example starting from basic gober gas gober gas or basic burning of biomass or biofuel to produce biofuel we will go with the complex terms like saccharification okay trans esterification what are those trans esterification methanogenesis like using microbes microbes for producing biofuel all these types of technologies i will be discussing here okay hopefully you are getting that so next is the second part of your syllabus here we enter the second part of your syllabus that part is called modern trends in the applications application of knowledge of science and technology modern trends in the application of knowledge of science see this is a modern trend in modern technology what are the new sciences which are discovered here we will be learning about basically biotechnology vaccinations and microbial diseases which you see in the newspaper here and there in a daily way okay so here the first chapter is crop science in india crop science in india simply heading you see crop science in india what is the crop science in india here we will be learning about institutions like indian council for agriculture research ICRISAT, ICRISAT, International Rice Research Institution, a role of biotechnology institutions, okay, biotech, role of state universities, all these you will be learning here for their contribution in the food security or crop science of India, okay. Next, you will be learning about the characteristics of plant what is the morphology what type of seeds does it get how long does that grow what is the time it uh, sprouts etc and etc okay you will also learn about the classification of plants here classification general classification i will be teaching you here next year apart from that within the characteristics you will also learn about the reproduction in the plants reproduction like example from the figure you can see sexual and asexual reproduction all those you will be learning here sexual and asexual reproduction next is within the crop plants this is basically a geography topic my friends we cannot expect what exactly happens but here i try to provide you basic crop plants in india what are the diseases they are affected with what is the cure for them and what is the treatment okay that i will be providing you in the slides next is forest species various forest species will be discussed here like tendu tendu leaves which are made used in the making of beads or cigars okay you will also be learning about the neem medicinal properties of these species how they are useful especially forest species next you will learn about the medicinal and aromatic plants lot of medicinal plants in our household you will be learning like turmeric turmeric tulsi tulsi ginger ginger apart from this apart from this you will also learn about some other uh, technical words uh, some more sophisticated medical plants and aromatic plants here you will also learn what are the various initiatives taken by the government of india like institutions which work for the aromatic and medicinal plants okay there is an institution under indian council of agriculture research which looks after medicinal and aromatic plants you will also learn about something called purple revolution purple revolution that is to bring a aromatic revolution to india beyond that you will be also introduced to harmful plants here you will learn about the various harmful plants like belladonna oleander pink oleander 
okay and datura flowers all those apart from that also you will also learn here about invasive species invasive species in plant invasive species in plants okay so all these taken together at last you will end with the utility of all these plants for the mankind one caution here some plants which are ayurvedic or medicinal in nature are also are also medicinal in nature okay which are harmful could be medicinal which are medicinal could also be harmful when taken in large quantities all this will be learning in this chapter very easy interesting helpful second chapter will be the concept of biotechnology biotechnology here i like to give you the definition of biotechnology like basically i can say biotechnology is a branch which includes the biology microbials or microchemistry etc etc i can say or the branch of science which deals with the living organisms is called biotechnology isn't it like that so i'll give you various definitions which you can write in the examination within the concept of biotechnology i will introduce you the various branches in biotechnology green gray blue applications of this biotechnology health education etc and etc within this biotechnology i will also make you to introduce about the enzyme technology enzyme technology that is preparation of enzymes enzymes i will also make you to understand how biotechnology especially technology called fermentation fermentation this will also come in a topic called food biotechnology there also i'll discuss but here i'll make you introduce about the fermentation and i'll make you know how fermentation is used in produce production of antibiotics antibiotics especially penicillin production i'll be in a brief manner not in a detail penicillin production in a brief manner next you see you might say sir biotechnology is so wide yes but most of things we will be learning in application of genetic engineering okay here we have a separate class for stem cell research what are the types of stem cells like pluripotent stem cells embryonic stem cells how stem cells can be used for the purpose of treatment isn't it pluripotent pluripotent embryonic embryonic sometimes you can also see term called uh, like induced pluripotent stem cells induced pluripotent i will also make you to learn what is something called blastocyst blastocyst okay how you can extract the embryonic stem cells all this will be dealt in stem cells but in here where you have applications of genetic engineering here i will teach you a separate class on dna profiling profiling sometimes called fingerprinting also finger printing dna fingerprinting okay those we will be learning we will be also learning about what is exactly dna what exactly is rna types of rna what is rna interference how you create interferons by using genetic technology interferons interferons you see interferons interferons are those substances which are basically antiviral in nature which can be used to fight viruses okay which are basically produced inside your body you will also learn about the mitochondrial dna or mitochondrial technology which is used in three baby production okay three parents baby all these technologies lot of technologies okay some we'll also learn very separately because syllabus has been providing very wide for example within the application of genetic engineering you have a topic called stem cell which is dealt separately so again within the application of biotechnology you will learn about cloning that i will be dealing separate class here i will teach you what is transgenic animals transgenic animals okay transgenic animals and microbes don't worry for that next here you see biotechnology in agriculture biotechnology in agriculture that is how do you create bio fertilizers from bacteria fungal or parasite how do you create them we'll also learn what are bio pesticides how bio pesticides work what are the various diseases they can cure okay like fungal based bio pesticides we'll learn 
microbial based basically fungal based bacterial based biofertilizers all these will be dealt and sometimes i'll also teach you in this topic virus based biofertilizers virus based biofertilizers okay no biofuels will be dealt here whole of biofuel will be dealt in the topic of uh, fifth unit here biofuel cultivation and extraction everything will be dealt here not here okay next tissue culture for the plant cloning here i will be teaching you what is tissue culture types of methods which are used in tissue culture and micro propagation what is that all these things i'll teach you next is environmental biotechnology here from the picture you might know you will be learning about bioremediation processes okay this is like a process of micro propagation this is tissue culture basically this is environment biotechnology this is cloning technology okay now cloning some other topics will be dealt in application of biotechnology itself don't worry okay like monoclonal antibodies all those will be dealt in vaccination also if you are missing anything i'll definitely give you each and everything next within the environment biotechnology here you will be learning something called bioremediation bioremediation that is use of microorganisms for the cleaning of uh, pollution soil water etc next you will also learn about phytoremediation phytoremediation what is phytoremediation you are using plants in this case instead of microbes you are using plants which are genetically modified so next you will also learn about mycoremediation what is mycoremediation basically you will be using fungus fungus based organisms to treat uh, water to treat uh, pollution and all those so these will be your biotechnology concept of biotechnology will be this very easy simply i have said each and every word nothing created by me here my friends this is wholly a copy paste of syllabus copy of tspsc group 1 and each and every word will be given a notes each and every word no topic will be left off so that you are very clear with your concepts next uh, food biotechnology this is very interesting this is very easy also here you learn how biotechnology helps in food production for example enzyme production enzyme production which can be used for catalyst process catalyst process in the food processing industry okay all these for example there is an enzyme which is used for making curd and cheese curd and cheese renin is that enzyme okay renin basically this renin is obtained from the animal stomach okay so this is very cruel way of extracting this renin and that to what we get is very limited but in order to produce that in a mass scale we utilized biotechnology by introducing certain genes in e coil bacterium e coil bacterium and from that we were able to produce enzymes so such what exactly is food biotechnology and all this i'll be teaching you next will be food safety food quality food regulation this is basically i'll teach you about fssai food safety standard authority of india various laws which have been subsumed in that i'll also be teaching you various uh, sub topics in fssi like front front of the pack labeling system okay all those systems what are the star marks where should be the labeling should be there all that along with this i'll also teach you few state laws okay next uh, in quality standards and safety food safety and quality here you will be reading about hack up hack h a p c c a hack up and you'll also learn about what are the safety measures what we take in india how like uh, safety mitra programs uh, food safety mitra programs netsco fan netsco fan netsco fan various initiatives taken up by food safety standard authority at world level we learn about institutions called iso standards for the food international standards fruit product order fpo standards all these even wto standards for sanitary and phytosanitary measures all this you will be learning in this even the codex alimentaries codex alimentaries these all you will be learning in these topics very interesting very easy one standard notes i will be giving you here okay now 
recent trends in the organic farming i'll teach you what organic farming is which is the state which has highest area under organic farming my friends it is madhya pradesh it is madhya pradesh such static information what is the mechanization status in india what are the various schemes for mechanization and organic farming in india okay like for example in organic farming you have paramparagat krishi vikas yojana paramparagat krishi vikas yojana per drop more drop okay krishi sincha yojana in farm mechanization like custom hiring centers all this i'll be teaching you okay within this organic farming i'll also make you to understand what is called zero budget natural farming zbnf zero budget natural farming what exactly the components of zero budget natural farming that also will be dealt here next is farm mechanization i have done next is safe drinking water my friend this might look simple but very very difficult to understand and uh, evolve a proper answer in this i have made successfully made uh, to you understand what are the iso standards for water that is bureau of indian standards what does bureau of indian standards say about the quality of water what are the diseases diseases which you get because of not drinking quality water what is fluorosis fluorosis what is the range of water pollution in india water pollution in india wpi simply arsenic pollution arsenic pollution you will also learn about uranium pollution in india uranium pollution in india you will also learn about central pollution control boards standards for drinking water okay standards for drinking water washing water etc here within the safe drinking water you have something called defluoridization and other technique used for safe drinking water like i'll also tell about the nanotechnology and its purification but within the defluoridization defluoridization technique used you will learn methods like bone char method bone char method okay some famous methods like nalgonda method nalgonda method nalgonda method it's also called algona 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 method okay where you will be using substance called alum all those i will be teaching you here apart from that reverse osmosis will be taught in this paper and all other water purification technologies will be learned here in a very detailed manner hopefully you can understand all this from the figure this is a bone charcoal method my friend contact precipitation it is called contact contact precipitation each paper each class will have adequate number of pictures which you can easily replicate in your examination paper to gain better marks okay all this okay so next chapter is microbial infections wonderful chapter lots of enjoyment or entertainment comes here you will be learning about various diseases which are caused by virus fungus bacteria or any other pathogen okay parasites you can say here you see protozoal fungal viral bacterial like protozoal in the sense you will be learning about kala azar etc kala azar which is not given in detail in the syllabus those also you will learn see whatever given in the syllabus you will deal but apart from the syllabus some news which are in news recently those will be dealt in these categories you see they just gave introduction to bacterial viral protozoal and fungal when they are asking you to introduce you should also know some more diseases apart from which are provided in the syllabus no so for that within the viral like west nile fever west nile fever zika virus zika virus nipah virus will also be dealt in this class okay within the protozoal the leishmaniasis kala azar okay and elephantiasis will also be dealt within the fungal infection diseases like uh, sexually transmitted diseases gonorrhea and ringworm will be dealt here and each of the topic like diarrhea dysentery cholera what is the basic difference between diarrhea dysentery and cholera what exactly is the definition of diarrhea according to who like when a person goes more than 3 unformed stools see child going uh, unformed stools is not diarrhea when you are going more than 5 times that to an unformed stool but if your stool is formed that is not diarrhea if your stool is unformed that is called diarrhea what is different between diarrhea and dysentery which causes bleeding diarrhea or dysentery 
what causes cholera is it bacteria or virus okay all those you will be learn tuberculosis bacterial disease very detailed what are the plans which are launched by india like tb mukt bharat 2025 okay tb mukt bharat you will learn about malaria initiatives taken by malaria for uh, eradication of malaria in india latest current affair like uh, vaccine for malaria montrix okay mosquitrix is a vaccine for malaria which has been uh, uh, concluded or which has been uh, uh, what you can say who has uh, said okay launch this uh, vaccine you will also learn about uh, national vector bone control program national vector bone control program each and everything what are the preventive measures during outbreak that is during the outbreak what they have taken before the outbreak what they have taken all this i will be dealing here next viral infections like hiv encephalitis chikungunya bird flu each and every topic will be dealt very separately quality notes will be given in with figures with figures okay next last chapter vaccination very funny and very easy topic hopefully you will enjoy here you will be learning about the immunity like for example what is humoral immunity like here humoral and cellular immunity simply i can say passive and active immunity systems passive and active which parts of the body give you immunity like skin is your first uh, set of immune system the acid in your stomach is a sort of immune system various white blood cells okay lymphocytes are the immune systems and other body parts which produce you immune like liver spleen okay bone marrow of your femur bone all these will be dealt in very detail here okay next within the fundamentals of vaccination i will tell you what is antigen antibody what are the different types of vaccines like for example even the modern vaccinations like dna and rna vaccine rna vaccine even edible vaccines edible vaccines side effects okay what are the various vaccines which have been launched for covid 19 like for example dna vaccine rna vaccine okay you will also learn about called live attenuated vaccine dead vaccine okay or subunit vaccine what are the types subunit vaccine so how these types differ from each and other you learn about the fundamentals in the concept of vaccination how they are differing from each other very detailed you will be learning types of vaccination okay you will learn about the diseases called diphtheria pertussis and tetanus that is dpt along with learning the disease you will learn how to produce this vaccine dpt vaccine this is also called triple vaccine triple vaccine so i will also make you to know understand how to attempt a question if they are not giving dpt directly but give the name triple vaccine that also i will explain you okay each topic my friend i would like to inform everyone each topic will have its own mcqs and mains questions and model answers so that you are very clear with your concepts now you will also learn the max the manufacturing of vaccines for dpt and rabies vaccine and modern technology vaccines like hepatitis vaccine especially here i will be teach you hepatitis b hepatitis b vaccine okay so this is what about the vaccination now here we have ended our science and technology no we haven't the first chapter was left i said you first chapter will be your last chapter to learn now you will understand you see classical and emerging areas of science and technology is the heading given but you might say sir this is heading why should i learn heading i'll just learn the topics given why should i learn heading when the topics are given i'll just learn topics no you should also be very familiar with the heading also this is what the clear heading which was provided in emerging technologies i will be making you to learn emerging technologies in each field each field that is in the field of aerospace space that is in the field of biotechnology that is in the field of health health that is in the field of vaccination and microbials whatever you want to write that in the field of agriculture agriculture that is syllabus i am doing the syllabus like crop science space energy like emerging areas in energy energy storage all these i will be dealing here okay like even i'll make you to discuss the emerging technologies like hyperloop 
हाइपर लूप यू विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट लार्ज हाइड्रॉन कोलाइडर लार्ज हाइड्रॉन कोलाइडर ओके ऑल दिस न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी विल बी ब्रीफली डिस्कस्ड ओके इन दिस चैप्टर Apart from that, they have used the term called value addition by science and technology. Mostly, this is innovation. Basically, innovation. This I'll deal in a separate way. This is what current affairs of science and technologies. They have given current science and technology developments in India. You might have observed in the whole syllabus, my friend. Nowhere there has been given a separate topic called Indian missile systems. but this is a very very important topic that topic is very hidden within this topic they have given current science and technology developments in india here in monthly current affairs we provide you compilation of monthly science and technology current affairs which includes program like integrated guided missile program any missile test done by drdo any other new technology developed by drdo or various other science and technology institutions in india which like biotechnology etc and etc that every monthly compilation will be available to you including all that this is current affair next importance of science and technology in national development very generic that is uh, application of science and technology in education science uh, like agriculture health uh, how improvement in science and technology has increased the increased the life expectancy of a person how this has reduced the maternity mortality rate that is number of mothers dying or child mortality rate vaccinations improved vaccination see we have universal immunization program in india because of this universal immunization program because of the science and technology only we were able to launch this then only our children are not dying under the age of 5 so that initiatives third points i will be providing you here next last is industrial development and urbanization never think these are this is a geography or economy topics no i am never going to teach you that i am not going to tell you what is amrut mission i am not going to tell you anything about uh, what's an industry types of industries msme small big no i don't care about that i am a science and technology teacher here is the topic of science and technology whether the question might come i don't care but what we care here is we have to learn application of science and technology in urbanization issues like for example urbanization faced with the issues of uh, solid waste management solid waste management how science and technology can manage solid waste urban areas faced with air pollution how science and technology provide solution to air pollution they face crux of resources like energy energy and water resources how they can produce how science and technology can produce how science and technology can help urban areas from disaster disasters how they can mitigate the disasters these dimensions i'll be discussing in urbanization similar is the case with industry how science and technology helps industrial progression for example when you see the world's developing countries all are industrialized countries the first country to industrialize was the first country to colonize colonize and it's the leading country for example industrialization started in england then england ruled around the world for centuries like 200 to 400 years uh, europe was leading the whole country so that's why how science and technology for example we say that cyber physical systems cyber physical systems is the next uh, revolution of uh, industry that is fourth industrial revolution is nothing but cyber physical system that is integrating your physical systems with internet artificial intelligence if india is not catching the world if india is not developing the science and technology if india is not establishing the enough laboratories enough scientific institutions we cannot become an industrial developed country those dimensions i'll discuss here those are the things what you have to understand those you can understand only through all this knowledge of last nine chapters then only you will understand this chapter okay hopefully you have understood each and everything what i have said you here i hope uh, you will listen to all my classes very carefully and keenly i have done a very hard work my friends it's not easy to develop such a content hope you will uh, utilize my content and thank you for watching this video this is nikhil from achievers academy 
Thank you.